This is a request by Dark Amulet on what if Burma was evil. The divergence point honestly isn't too big, as her initial characterization was very selfish, manipulative, and with limited empathy. So all that's needed for her to go down this path is to simply not change from those around her, and be slightly stronger in these personality traits. Her experiences with Goku have her instead be dead set on avoiding the conflicts that would come from his actions, and the downfall of the Red Ribbon Army has her take their research for development once the headquarters are abandoned. While the group prepare for the 22nd Tenkaichi Budokai, Burma starts developing a more compact battle jacket to oppose a conflict that would come up and the sense of power tempts her into another surefire way to avoid any dangers. In Age 752, she gathers the Dragon Balls and wishes for all in the world to obey her commands. When Yamacha faces Tenshinhan, Buruma shouts at the latter to lose, which causes him to lower his guard and be knocked out the rin. A similar pattern going on for the rest of the Budokai, until Yamacha is given a free championship title. Tenshin Han then leaving with Surusenin when this cheap win has only furthered his desire to follow an assassin's path. This quicker turn of events has Kuririn avoid being slain by Tambourine. Buruma has no interest in getting involved and returns home, whereas Yamacha's leg being fine has him come with Roshi, Goku and Kuririn. Roshi not being able to stop Goku attacking the Daimao and getting injured as usual. Roshi sacrificing sacrificing himself, and Kuririn having Chaozu's fate. Yamucha then takes Goku to Karinto, with her home being the Daimao's first target. Buruma confronts him with her battle jacket. Though not having improved it enough to fight him, she commands him to be her servant, which he is forced to accept. It's by this point that Goku arrives after having had the Choshinsui, and is surprised by the situation, especially once Dark thoughts about how her life has become so hectic since Goku appeared, as Buruma command him to serve her too. When told of Shen Lon's avatar being destroyed, she commands Goku to go to Karinto as a means of finding more spiritual information, which leads to him being tutored by Kami. Piccolo makes a public announcement of ceding control of the world to Buruma, whose policies focus on increasing technological research and tributes to her, including a male harem. It's when finding out about all this, that Yamucha consults Karin, who tells him of the wish Buruma has made. Having not been commanded to be loyal, Yamucha is told by Karin to be tutored by Kami in order to surpass the latter and make the wish void if she tries to command him. Sparring with Goku aids both in their progress, with them each being far stronger than normally by the time of the 23rd Tenkaichi Budokai. Meanwhile, Buruma gives Piccolo permission to prepare for the Budokai, with how it'll display the strength of those loyal to her, and give her data to improve her battle jacket. Three years later, Buruma commands Goku to become her lover when seeing him, and tells Yamucha to get out of her sight, but Yamucha refuses to her shock. As Goku is forced to refuse Chi-Chi's request, remembering Yamucha's false confession has her drawn to him instead. Kami doesn't enter when knowing Yamucha has surpassed him. Tao Pai Pai is the only one of Suru Sen's group to enter, with Ten Shin Han having lost all confidence in it, and is defeated by Goku in the semi-finals, with Yamucha defeating Piccolo Daimao and then facing Goku. Although Goku holds the power advantage, Yamucha's determination to win has him strategize well and hold off using the Sokidan until then, winning by Renout with a surprise attack. As Buruma leaves with Goku, Goku and Piccolo, Yamacha leaves for a new future with Chi-Chi. It's during the five-year gap that Buruma is approached
established by Eon Magenta and Carmine with the proposition to ally with Red Pharmaceuticals when they judge her goals to have become similar to those of the Red Ribbon, with the only condition being that Goku is given over to Gero. Buruma sees it as an acceptable proposal and then meets with Gero, telling him that he works for her now, with Goku at his mercy and someone with similar conquest goals to him. Gero instead reconstructs Goku into an artificial human and later does the same with Buruma, not installing a shutdown device in Eva as per Buruma's request, and vastly increasing his progress with Buruma Finance and his research. When Raditz arrives, he is easily overpowered and captured to become yet another of Gero's creations, Vegeta finding no interest in Earth without mention of the Dragon Balls. Buruma's hold over the Earth is thereby assured, with her and Gero planning to bring more of the universe under their Jinzo Ningen evolution ideology, also bringing the spy robot into space. With Raditz's knowledge, they quickly locate and overthrow Frieza's empire, but Ginyu launches a counter-attack by stealing Goku's body, with Raditz, Gero, and Burma then disposing of him. Though being in a different body may make Goku void of the wish, he would be too conditioned at this point to rebel. It wouldn't take long for Burma to conquer almost all the known universe with her current power leaving nobody in her path who could resist her command, it having been strengthened in correlation with her new power. As age starts to affect him, Kami accepts his life ending after age 767, with his one solace being Piccolo's power will no longer be misused. In age 774, struggling to find any energy, with most earthlings having been made into infinite energy type models, as requested by Burma, Babidi becomes desperate enough to start a direct fight against the capsule empire. Raditz would take on Babidi's group alone and be disposed of when Dabra's spit catches him off guard. Having been reconstructed, Vegeta swiftly stops Dabra and assures Burma's supremacy. Gero would eventually make Hedo his assistant, though would be warned by Burma to install a bomb in all of Hedo's creations to avoid him rebelling. They wouldn't place any commands on him out of respect for Gero and seeing herself as having risen too far for him to ever change that. With not enough pure-hearted Saiyans, Beerus would quickly go back to sleep in Super's continuity. Planet Serial would be deemed too insignificant for its population to be reconstructed en masse, with Granola using the Dragon Balls to become the strongest in the universe, using what few years he has left to overthrow Buruma's empire. It's in desperation that this one man army, that Buruma would start developing a time machine and go back a few years to wipe out Serial's population. Her campaign would have her learn of the Serialian Dragon Balls, but have to go back to her timeline when Monitor takes his own life to avoid her using them. When returning to her history though, she'd find her strongest soldiers wiped out and Hedor having used the opportunity to have the Gammas apprehend Gero before he could use the remote with the Gammas and Granola being able to get rid of the Empress once and for all. Hedor would then work with Granola to bring stability to the universe, eventually stepping down from any leadership role when not viewing himself as worthy to rule. But countless Chinzo Ningen would have unwittingly raised Universe 7's mortal rating enough that Senor would spare it, given a hopeful future for Hedor's diligence. In a non-super scenario, Cell would would eventually be released, this version held in the cells of Goku, Raditz, Piccolo Daimao, Frieza, Ginyu and Dabra. Being threat as a side project due to long development, Gero would have been negligent enough for Hedo to compromise it by having hacked the computer to feed Cell orders to overthrow Burma, with Cell quickly doing so after achieving a far stronger perfect form than usual due to Hedo's own involvement, as with Cell Max. Cell would then dispose of Gero, when having no loyalty to him, and start a fight against all of Gero's creations to test his power, but eventually be overwhelmed due to Hedor installing the same weak point in him as Cell Max, and limiting Cell's regeneration, eventually doing what he can to keep the universe ordered in this power vacuum, the Gammas wiping out any enemy
Megumi Jinzo Ningen. Many of the major Jinzo Ningen, such as Goku, would go back to their usual selves without Buruma's commands. Vegeta would still be evil enough to try and rule in place of both his fallen oppressors, but the Gammas would deal with him. In the GT continuity, the lack of enough beings with Ki would cause Mew to give up on using loot to aid Baby's growth. Instead, Mew would form an alliance with Hedor to develop Neo Machine Mutants. Developing creations comparable to Super 17, Hedor would be unable to sabotage these despite his efforts, and even the Gammas would be unable to fight a swarm of them. Having trained to utilize his infinite energy and cyan biology to its limits rather than attempting to rebel, Nappa would be the one to help turn the tide and foil Mew. Nappa would then agree to work with Hedor as thanks for his grandfather having allowed him to become so strong and being able to fight and test his limits for what would seem an endless amount of time. It's in this scenario that we see how dangerous Buruma could be. Not only could she have gone down a far darker path if she didn't grow beyond what her character traits were, but the potential of her scientific expertise with the speciality of Geralt would be something few could contend with. Thank you for having watched through this what if. Comment your own requests for what ifs or any type of Dragon Ball video and subscribe to not miss them. Check out this playlist of older ones and if wanting to see another scenario of Buruma's selfish desires creating a domino effect for Hedor, you may be interested in this what if of her getting her initial wish for the perfect boyfriend.